In this video, we're going to explore the relationship between a sum of a sine and a cosine wave with the same frequency, the type of thing that typically arises when we're looking at particular solutions to non-homogeneous first-order equations with sinusoidal forcing terms, and the standard phase amplitude form of a sine wave that you might see in pre-calculus. Now, the graph before us in Desmos shows the function a sine wx plus b cosine wx. We know in this formula that if I vary the coefficient a of sine then we see the amplitude will increase and decrease with a. Similarly, if I vary the coefficient b of cosine, the amplitude will also increase or decrease with b. Of course, w controls the frequency or the period of the resulting wave as well. But if you were watching carefully, you'll also notice that what happened as we controlled little a and little b was that the waves got out of phase with each other. Let's compare what we saw with this first example with what we might see by manipulating the parameters in a standard phase amplitude form of a sine wave. Again, messing with A increases or decreases the amplitude. Messing with W, of course, increases or decreases the frequency. And now the parameter D will control how much that wave is shifted to the left or right. This demonstration suggests that if we compare an expression of the form a sine omega t plus b cosine omega t with the standard phase amplitude form of a sine function that you might see in pre-calculus, there should be a relationship between these two. This relationship can be made explicit by appealing to the difference in angles formula for sine, which, after distributing the amplitude a, results in a sum of a sine omega t and a cosine omega t just like below. If we now equate the coefficients of like terms on both sides of this new equation, we receive a system of two equations for the two unknowns big A and little d. If we square both sides of this equation and add the results together, using the well-known trig fact that cosine squared plus cosine is 1, then what we get is a formula for the amplitude big A which is fairly simple to solve. If we instead divide the second equation by the first equation and equate the coefficients on both sides, we get big a, little b over little a equals negative sine d over cos d, which we can solve using arctangent to obtain a formula for the phase shift d. Let's apply the formulas we just derived to calculate the amplitude and phase shift for the steady state solution to the alternating current RC circuit. Now, in that example, we derived a formula for the particular solution, which ended up being the steady state solution, as 1 over 1 plus omega squared sine omega t minus omega over 1 plus omega squared cosine omega t. To compare this with the formula on the previous slide, we note that the coefficient of sine omega t, which we were calling little a, is going to be 1 over 1 plus omega squared, and the coefficient of cosine omega t, which we were calling b, is going to be negative omega over 1 plus omega squared. So a little bit of algebra shows that when you look at the square root of a squared plus b squared in this case, the result will simplify to 1 over the square root of 1 plus omega squared. Note here that as omega, which is the angular frequency of the input or the electromotive force, as that value increases, the amplitude of the response will decrease just like we saw in our experiments. For the phase shift, we use the formula that d is the arctangent of negative b over a, which results in the simple formula that d in this case is the arctangent of omega. To look at these functions in MATLAB, a type of plot which is typically referred to in the literature as a Bode plot, but which will also recall the frequency response function because it describes how our system responds to different frequency inputs. The top plot here shows the amplitude as a function of omega, while the bottom plot shows the phase shift as a function of omega. In the first case, we can see that sure enough, as omega increases, the amplitude decreases towards zero whereas the phase shift increases towards it looks like an asymptote eventually as omega goes to infinity. 